Today, Javi schooled Carlo Ancelotti again. So, we have to discuss a lot of tactical mistakes. Let's first react to experts' analysis. Well, we questioned which Real Madrid would turn up, the Champions League one or La Liga one. None turned up at all. <laughs> the awful one. Dear me. I mean, I think Marker said in the commentary there was no inspiration, there was no guile in the final third, there was just no energy, there was nothing, absolutely nothing. You know, they made Barcelona... They made Marcus Alonso look like a decent centre-half. Hmm. That was an area of the team we thought, right, they can pinpoint Alonso playing centre-half. Christensen wasn't fully fit. They moved Arojo to right back. There was no Lewandowski. There was no Pedro. They're off the back of a horrible defeat at Almeria, getting lobbed out of the Europa League by Man United, albeit they're playing well. You're at the Bernabeu, and that's, that's what you produce. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, Barcelona's shape was good. Very right, nice. Defended really well. But boy, yeah. I mean, Vinicius Jr. spent a whole 90 minutes complaining and whinging. Benzema never got a kick, really. The changes didn't work. I mean, it was just an awful performance from Real Madrid. Every word that Craig just said is absolutely true. Like, there's nothing wrong what he said. In fact, if you see this Barcelona lineup, their best players, Dembele, Lewandowski and Pedri didn't play. And Christensen was injured. So you are playing against one of the weakest Barcelona team in law in a long time, and you cannot even score one single goal, let alone goal. You cannot take one single shot on target. So how do you win against Barcelona? So who is responsible for today's disaster class? Is everyone. Every players were really bad. And the most important one, the main guy that we all can put the blame on is none other than our coach, Carlo Ancelotti. It was so flat, so mm. lacking energy, Ali. And as much as you want to praise Barca, brilliant, great yeah. for them, bouncing back after a couple of horrible results, the story here has to be Real Madrid. It was a lifeless performance from Real Madrid. And, and, and again, it's, if you were to do this against Elche, if you were to do this against Almeria, you can kind of say, you know what? Hey, they overlooked the rival. They're not really interested. They're not really concerned so on and so forth. But they did this against Atletico Madrid on the weekend, kind of dismissed it because of the result by Barcelona against Almería. And then you say, okay, well, here, yeah. against Barcelona, El Clásico, Copa del Rey semifinal, for sure, for certain, you're going to get a better version from Real Madrid. None at all. None at all. The lack of intensity and urgency in passing of the ball, in movement with and without the ball... This was a team that seemed content to just, you know what, we're just going to pass the ball around and eventually we're going to break through and we're going to go sideways, never pressuring higher up the field, never creating turnovers, never forcing Barcelona into really uncomfortable positions. And to Barcelona, I will say this, I did not know that this team had this in them. To defend like this, they have defended well in La Liga and that, we have talked about that time and time again. But with this sort of shape, discipline, very much in control, very comfortable in their defensive position, and then just going on the counterattack whenever they had the opportunity to do that. A practical, pragmatic performance from Barcelona kind of looked at times like Atletico Madrid from their best years under Simeone, and it kind of looked like what Almeria did to Barcelona this past weekend. So from Barcelona's point of view, because you have a lot of players missing, you have to just to play for a draw, or if you can score a goal, you can win. That's a lot for Barca's point of view. But from Real Madrid's perspective, when you're playing home at Bernabeu, the juggernaut of football, you are playing like this, like there is, it's not about the lack of intensity. Actually, we had good amount of intensity, especially in first half before Barca scored goal. Like there was the moments where Real Madrid was displaying, like who is the real boss here? Like, we were not letting them pass. Barca could not get out of their half. We were playing really good. But once Barca scored the goal, everything became different. We became so predictable. We suddenly lost our momentum. We lost our urgency to create chances. Our players who have been so successful this season suddenly went missing. They forgot how to play football. And look at the passing we're doing. We're just doing the same thing. Like just passing side side way, back way. You have to do some creative passes, right? You cannot play just passing, side passing. You have to do something different. And all the crosses that we have been doing, oh my God, that's horrendous. Carvajal, all the cross he did today, 
90% went to Ter Stegen, and the, re the rest of the 10% went to Barca's defender. Like, he even doesn't know how to cross. He was playing as if he never played football. So let's delve into more details about our tactical disaster class. First of all, when you have a successful match, you played one of the best performances of the season against Liverpool. You have to pick that lineup, right? Especially the players you have available. The midfield we played in that match was Modric, Kamavinga, and Fede Valverde. So simply you have to play that midfield because that's the energetic midfield we have. Those are the players that gave us the best performance of the season. Simply, if you follow the logic, you have to keep the same lineup. But Carlo went for Cruz and Modric at midfield. I have said many times before that Cruz and Modric are at an age you cannot play them both at the same time. The second point, Fede Valverde at right wing, it worked well against a team that presses well. Yeah, Barca does the same thing. They are high pressing team. But today, because they didn't have enough players, they had different tactics. They sit back like Almeria or Atletico Madrid. So as a coach, you have done a mistake. You started at Fede as right wing. I understand that. But as a coach, as a modern coach, you have to change your tactics. You have to change your tactics as soon as possible. Being further at midfield at first half. And third, our one of our best players at midfield this season is Sebels. He did not get a single minute game time today. Can you explain me why Sebaios didn't have game time today? And what annoys me so much, you know, Carlo has done this against Liverpool. He changed at halftime. He switched the position between Fede and Modric. And that's why we had good result. But today, for some reason, whenever he plays against Barca, his brain stops working. You could have kept clean sheet today. I probably I don't. I don't know if they had a shot on target. I mean, Ter Stegen did a great job in doing all the little things, cleaning stuff up, coming out, punching stuff. And obviously, we know how good he is with his feet to be able to distribute out of the back. But it really, you know, to the to the points that Maca made, Craig, Ollie, uh, throughout was there was nothing that pulled people out of positions. There was no. Marcos Alonso, who was running in front of him when a cross was coming to open up space behind him? It was just so stagnant in front of a well-organized block defensively. So what do you have to do to do that? You have to make some runs to get people out. But you talked about at halftime. Is there a point where shots from distance, pull them out, create some space? But nope, pass here, pass there. Oh, good tackle. I'm going to... Complain to the referee. So another tactical mistake by Carlo. When you saw that Vinicius was marked by Araujo, like he could not do anything against Araujo. And this is not the first time Vinny struggles against Araujo. That means as a coach, you have to help him. He's a young player. He's lost. You have to do something. What could you do? First of all, switch Vinicius in the right side for a while and see how things go. Because Vinicius could do better against Balde than Araujo for sure. And Vinny at times showed that he can play at right side too. So as a tactics, you have to switch up play sometimes. But unfortunately, our coach is sometimes so stubborn, he doesn't change it. Pab, do you want to talk about great defensive performance from Barcelona <laughs> or Real Madrid being rubbish? <laughs> I would give credit to Barcelona. Uh, I think they've been excellent defensively. Uh, one of the best performances I've seen from Barcelona in terms of being compact, very narrow, not giving any chance to uh, Real Madrid in attack. Uh, they, they, they forced them to play sideways. They, we, they couldn't break them down. Uh, really, and, and it, it was a, a fantastic performance, especially in the semi-final of Copa del Rey, that is, the, is uh, two games. And uh, So if we discuss Javi's tactics, we can criticize him for being hyperbolic because he said he doesn't like playing this way, like he doesn't like playing low block football. He doesn't, he wants to play always beautiful football, which he didn't do it. But on the other side, as a coach, if you want to be top coach, you have to play have defensive tactics, right? You have to play low block football because that's necessary. An ideal coach, a good coach always will play a team what he has. He has to play his team at a strength. And Javi realized that he cannot play attacking football with this team against Real Madrid. Otherwise, they will trash them. So he went pragmatic. And that shows that Javi is learning over time. And whatever he did today, everything worked for him. We were all sat here after that Liverpool game 
eulogising about Real Madrid, but quite clearly that has been an anomaly. Yeah. Mm. You know, that tells you how bad Liverpool have been this year. <laughs> that tells you how bad Liverpool's defending is. Vinicius wasn't playing against the Rojo. He was playing against one of the worst defenders in the Premier League, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Not one of the worst players, one of the worst defenders. Yep. Got torn apart. Gomez, Van Dijk, all been poor this year. And Real Madrid took advantage of it. What they've found in La Liga are actually teams that are pretty decent defensively. OK, they can't match them in terms of quality. But some of these teams in La Liga... They're, they're quite stoic defensively, and Barcelona were that tonight, and 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 you know that that was the difference. And I think we have to after that Liverpool game, it's like, oh my God, who's going to beat them playing like this? They, they can't, yeah, <laughs> they can't repeat that performance they had against Liverpool on a regular basis. They just can't do it. First of all, I don't agree that the Liverpool performance is anomaly. If we play like that, if we play our full strength, we can score so many goals against every team. Somehow, our coach doesn't stick to what does work every time. He changed everything that worked. He doesn't play the players who are in form. He plays his favorite players again and again. If you look at our players' performance, I think other than Kurtua and Rudiger, I think everyone was really bad today. Simply, we did not play as a team. We lacked cohesion. We did not have a game plan. We did not have clear-cut ideas what we want to achieve. We were just passing randomly. That's all. Also, I want to repeat the point that I already made that the, sub the substitution was too late and we did not put on the right players. We did not take off the players that we had to do earlier and combined with all of the tactical mistakes we did today were the result for today's disaster class performance. Don't get me wrong, it's just 1-0. But we had zero shot on targets at Bernabeu, at our home. This is not how Real Madrid should play at home. Also, it's not that I give a F about this Copa del Rey. I don't care about Copa del Rey Cup. The only reason I have a minute interest in this match was it was our arch rival, Barca. When they were playing one of the worst squad possible, you have to take advantage. And we simply did not take advantage of that. That word annoys me so much. Anyway, as you can see, I'm so enraged. I'm so pissed off. I'm so angry. So I'm out today.